Like, I think part of the, the reason that people become interested because they have watched horror movies mm -hmm. and they're like, well, is it really like that? And when you go back to something as interesting as Rosemary's Baby, which the author Ira Levin wrote because he was influenced by the press that the Church of Satan was receiving. And he was like, well, what if the next door neighbors were Satanists? And what if, they, if there really was a Satan and you could make a baby for Satan, which is not what the Church of Satan was saying, but that's where his thought no. led him. But when that book came out, the publicists of that and the movie that was then in the works, because it happened like immediately, when book and movie was going to come out, they approached the Church of Satan and said to Anton LaVey, could you help publicize this? And he was like, Sure, you know you got to pay me, of course. Yeah, and uh, they did, and because Satanists are pragmatic. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and what uh, you know he, they did is they they put out a press release that kind of hinted that Anton Lavey may have played the devil in the movie, and they said, "Look, we know you didn't, but go along with it." Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's like, "Sure, you know you can hint all you want, and people can freak out and, and worry about it." But they actually had him do a publicity stunt in San Francisco, where when the movie was premiered there. They had him show up in a black limo with a guys in robes, and they all came into the one of the premiere sh screenings, and then there was press there to ask questions about Satanism, and they made buttons. Around the country, the advertising campaign was Pray for Rosemary's Baby, but the buttons they made for that were Pray for Anton LaVey. Mm -hmm. Those are very rare. I do have some. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, the, the, the whole point is that years later, people tried to say, well, you know, Anton LaVey tried to piggyback on that and, and somehow was lying about this. And, and, you know, we have all the correspondence. We, you know, we yeah. know exactly what went on. And it was like, no, they asked him to help publicize it. They actually suggested that, asked him mm -hmm. to go along with it. And he's like, whatever you want to do. You know, you're mm -hmm. paying me nicely. This is fine. Mm -hmm. But the, the book was influenced by the Church of Satan quite clearly. Yeah. Hmm. When did that? I'm, I'm trying to find out when Rosemary's Baby came out. Oh, that was the in '68. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, could that have fed into the whole Satanic Panic thing? Well, the the, that was much later, and, and yeah, the, what started the Satanic Panic were Christian evangelists trying to drum right, up this right, idea. Right, right. Like first, there was uh, uh, Michelle remembers where a guy hypnotized a woman who later became his wife, and she started to say that a group actually called the Church of Satan was like, had been for years like molesting her and mutilating her and abusing her. And uh, the Church of Satan actually, and uh, Anton LaVey sued them and got them to take the references to the Church of Satan out of the book. Uh, oh, so it's like most people don't know about that. But that was like the seminal book, this idea that there was some kind of hidden group that was taking people in against their wishes and doing terrible things to them. Right after that, this book came out called The Satan Seller, a guy named Mike Warnke, who was an evangelical Christian. He had also been like a really messed up drug user. And he started to say, well, there's a satanic cult that's much darker and scarier than the Church of Satan. And they're global and that they actually have demons that will teleport you. And they do rituals where they cut off, you know, you'd put your finger down and they'd cut off the end of it and everybody would eat your little fingertip. And it was just just nutty stuff. Mm -hmm. but, How many people is a fingertip going to feed? <laughs> yeah. but, but people ate that up. <laughs> Especially the Christians. And no see, pun intended. Figuratively. Yeah. Figuratively ended up. <laughs> there became this whole network of, of evangelicals oh, pushing this idea to scare <laughs> folks into their uh, their religion. It's like, oh, well, you know, you got to join our church and pay our or else the devil's going to get you or the devil's minions. And it was so funny because, like, we, we used to call this stuff Geraldo Satanism because what Geraldo did is put, like, every friggin' week, you know, some new show about somebody who was, like, either putting graffiti under a bridge or it's, you know, was in the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And, and the, the absurdity of this, that it could go from, you know, molesting kids at a daycare center and all of those cases like McMartin, which is still, I think, the most expensive trial in the United States history, that we're, we're, it was actually an alcoholic woman who talked some kid into saying, you know, nonsense and made claims. And, they, and they're like, oh, there are tunnels under the daycare center and kids are being taken to Mexico. Yeah. And, and it was like, there was, there's no way any of this could actually happen. It was all fantasy. But there was such a craziness, this his, and that's why we call it the satanic panic. It was a hysteria mm -hmm. that happened where the, the, you know, the media got into it because it was, it was easy. It was like they got huge yeah. ratings. I went on all these shows and they would put me in a separate green room because everybody was afraid of me. Like, well, he's the Satanist. Maybe he's like taking kids away and having them mutilated and sacrificing babies. And they'd have some white trash girl come out and go, I had babies for Satan and I killed all of them. And it's like, Mm, you know, the statute yeah. on murder doesn't go away. Yeah. So if you really have, you're going to be in jail, honey. Uh, <laughs> and then there'd be all these people claiming, to, you know, they'd be sort of loosely associated with police departments. And what they did is they made a living 
being cult cops. Like they consult with police departments and they charge police departments like $125 a head for, for like a class of, you know, 75 police officers where they'd buy like the satanic Bible and like they'd go to the local occult store and buy like a, a fake skull and some shit like that. And they, well, we found this at a crime site. And they'd give all these lectures and just saying absolute bullshit, just sort of made up or mm -hmm. pulled out of all different kind of, you know, old books about witchcraft and occultism. And they made a fortune, and then people bought into that. And the major evangelists, they kept promoting it. And those books are still, I mean, most of them are out of print at this point. But it was kind of crazy. And it wasn't until the FBI really got into it. And, and, and in, mm -hmm. it was happening in Europe, too. And all the investigative agencies over there pooled their work with the folks here. And we in the Church of Satan consulted with these people. Anton LaVey did, I did. We were always working with the FBI and law enforcement people to say, no, this is what this really is. We'll help interpret symbols if there's crimes that are weird. We'll help mm -hmm. point out what this is related to or that it's just bullshit. Like, oh, that's a video game. You know, there's nothing yeah. real here. You know, because they don't know. Like, they, they come to these things and they see something weird and it's like, oh, no, that's Santeria or that's, you know, Palo Mayombe, you know, these other religions that aren't Christian or might be derived. They're Afro-Caribbean syncretist religions. They might be using symbols like that. Somebody's putting a curse on somebody. They, you know, pull a chicken head off or they've got, a, you know, a, a cauldron full of bones and skulls that they've stolen from a graveyard, you know, and like Palo Mayombe. And, but, but everybody's like, it's Satanism, it's Satanism. And it's like, no, 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 it's not. And that same thing is happening right now with uh, that, that M13 gang. Uh, because, MS-13. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, MS, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's it, MS-13. Yeah. Like, because they're interested in the Santa Muerte cult, which is really something that's derived from Christianity. Christianity has saints, and throughout Central and South America, the idea of mixing local pagan gods with the Christian saints has been forever since, like, the conquistador showed up. It actually mm -hmm. started. So this sort of skeleton goddess which the people who are her worshippers really believe she exists and can and can do wishes, you know, grant things, but she does it for, like, actually darker desires. So big with the drug dealers and also big with, like, outsiders, like gay people and uh, and other folks that are, are marginalized, but they, they worship this skeleton goddess who looks like death. But, of course, all the police who don't know about this at all, they're like, it's Satan, it's Satanism, and it's like, it isn't. You need to consult religious scholars to really understand unusual religions. And just because it's an unusual religion doesn't mean it's criminal. But with where this is concerned, there are criminal gangs using this as like a main symbol for, for what they're doing. So, you know, th that's always the, the issue. Like why we work with law enforcement is that to help them focus and not misinterpret things and be condemning people for something that they just don't even understand. Strong, smoking long, packing up the bone in the Pyrex bone, taking another hit until your feelings gone. It's that medical baby from California, keep up on ya. I'm a trauma, little bit of game.